So this one is the stunt guitar, and the first thing I need to do is get rid of some weight. So, done. I have now sanded it down, and about to get rid of the spray. I've got the headstock as well. So this is a scrap piece of wood, just going through where the neck would be. So nothing's going to get interrupted there. Time to spray. Have sanded it, and now I find more things on it. <laughs> so I haven't got a separate primer, so this is kind of my primer and paint in one. So I'm just going to give it quite a few layers. So I'm trying to be really careful here, not to coat it too much till we start to get runs or drips because that would just ruin the whole thing. I'd have to sand it off and start again. Okay, so that is coat number one finished. I can't go much thicker than that before it's going to start dripping. So, uh, time to leave it dry. So, while the guitar's drying, the doors for the workshop have actually arrived. So I've just marked out the height of the door frames because I've had to shrink things a bit. I've got my circular saw, and it's time to attack these. So, Great to see in one day both the workshop and the stunt guitar making progress. It would be nice to have the workshop ready to build the stunt guitar in it, but hey, I guess uh, time's not been in my favour. What is going on in the background? Somebody's beating me to the saw in, so time to get on with it. But before I do get on with it, remember, keep your earplugs with you. If you're a musician especially, most people watching my channel will be. Don't want to destroy your hearing, so make sure you've got earplugs every time you're about to use some loud machinery. I think that's a pretty good fit, if that's how it sits. <laughs> okay, so it's time to put the base strip on. This is gonna help the water run. I'm gonna purposely go over the sides by way too much and cut it down to size. And using the bottom of the door, give myself a flat edge to put this against so I know that I'm not going to scrape it on the floor. Right. I thought it was a good idea. Now I'm going to put a screw into every single slat just to strengthen the door. Okay, so now I've got all sorts going on, but these are all the locks and bits. I've never actually set a door before. I know that sounds weird, I've hung one that's already made for inside, but I have no idea what I'm doing with handles and locks. So I'm gonna have a play around and see what I can do about you styling on this. So you'll see what you see. Aha! Dilemma moment. Do I want the handle on this side or this side? Now, if the door hinges that way, then I get protection from any rain when I'm coming in and out, saves the floor getting wet potentially, and means that the space here is more open when this is all decking space. But if the door opens this way, then I've got easier access in and out if I've got heavy things or big things coming to the workshop. Should probably go for a heavy option, right? Yeah. Yesterday the camera died, but let's have an update. So the guitar is now painted, still on this random piece of wood, and the neck headstock is done. I didn't quite get the edges as smooth as I would have liked, but. I'm so happy with it. This is only going to be the stunt guitar, so there's not likely to be some super focused close on the guitar shots anyway. Now, my one of my students has a friend who does some printing, so I've also got some ninja sticker swirls and logos. The only thing is, they're a bit chunky. They're a bit too big for the headstock, so I might see if I can get some smaller ones done. Uh, but 
should be able to do something with these for the body. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to assemble this today and turn it into a full working guitar. And then I'm going to have a look at the other guitar, which I think will be the big reveal today. Oh, smoke from the last video was so much that I went through my house out the front and the whole courtyard out there was full of smoke. Neighbours looking out, one of them was tempted to call the fire brigade because they thought it was a fire. So, yeah, if I do test the big one, it's not going to be in this video. And when I do, I'm going to have to go somewhere where there's plenty of room and it's not going to affect people. Obviously, I knew I had to sign a dis disclaimer thing to say that I would only use those bigger ones for professional reasons, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but now having witnessed the smaller ones, yeah, I'm definitely going to make precaution to go away from residential estates to use it. But, uh, cool. Oh, also, after the camera died, I managed to finish off the door on the workshop. So we're one door down. Uh, just waiting for some more progress there as well. So on to the rebuild of this guitar. It's not a great finish. It doesn't feel so great. But, again, just a prop guitar doesn't need to be anything special and I quite like the fact you can kind of see the wood grain through the paint a bit. Uh, that's what happened with my blue guitar and I actually really like it. Um, it's great because it's the lazier way of painting and I think it's really cool so win-win. Right let's crack on. So it turns out I'm not very good at getting these stickers on, especially on this unfinished wood. So the paint job that I've done is just not, these stickers don't want to stick to it. So I think they would prefer to actually stick to something that's being coated with a lacquer or something. No, it's, uh, I'm glad I did a test piece on the back. Because it looks all right but it's really not great. So the new stunt guitar is now ready to just get some strings thrown on it. It doesn't need to be wired up, soldered, etc. because it is just for show. However, the new guitar that's actually going to be used for both recording and when I play live as the Guitar Ninja is the new Dean Razorback that I've picked up. Now, it's not in new condition, it does have a few chips, but I am completely happy with that. I actually wanted this guitar when I was about 14 and I first saw it exist. I thought it was an awesome looking guitar. I then felt like I grew up too much and just started buying like your Super Strat soloist shaped guitars. So yeah, it's quite cool to go back to my teenage self and buy the guitar of my dreams, especially knowing the fact that I'm trying to target now that kind of demographic for the academy and the guitar clubs. Hey guys, it's now Monday morning and I'm not quite sure where I left this off because I had a weekend off. But to give you a quick update, the workshop door is done. The roof, ceiling and wall are now back away from the wall, so that's nice and safe. So workshop is coming across nicely. Got a fair bit of work to do on it this week, but we'll, we'll see where that goes. I'll give you an update either in this video, depending on when it gets finished to vlog up or in the next one. So don't worry, workshop update will come soon. Secondly, over the weekend, I have been approached by somebody asking me to play a guitar solo for their YouTube video. They're a pretty small account. I had a look, most of the videos have only got about 100 to 200 views, but they've asked me to play a bit of a guitar solo. So I'm gonna do that. Just to kind of support them, the fact that I said that I would, I'm definitely not going to go back on my word. The thing that makes this solo even more interesting is I've never even heard the song before. It's a song, it, the title is Vaseline, so I'm going to film that, we'll do that in this vlog so you can see me producing that solo for them. It's actually learning somebody else's solo, not my favourite thing to do. I much prefer writing and improvising, but we'll show you the journey in a second. So here's me having a go at the Vaseline solo.
I'd literally never heard the song before. The timing in that solo felt a little bit weird. I was told I could do my own thing with it to some level, but I wanted to keep it as close to the original as possible. So I literally just let my own little timings creep in. But pretty much followed the notes of the original solo. That was with about three or four listen throughs. Looked at a bit of tab online, watched a couple of people playing it, covering it, so we can get a rough idea on the speed and the way they move their hands, and then had my take. So that's only with about 20 to 30 minutes worth of work to try and get that solo to sound about right. Um, I possibly could have put more time in and tried to make it better, um, which would be good, but with all the clubs and things that I'm running today in another town, I need to get packed up and set out, so I thought I'd give the best shot I could for that time, send it across and see if they're happy with it or not. So there's the solo done and dusted. So the last update of the weekend is I've been given an acoustic guitar to do some refurb, conditioning, cleaning and all of that on, which is actually one of my favourite things to do. I enjoy this almost as much as playing um, and teaching is quite therapeutic. The thing I really like is I can just put something on and just get lost in the process of cleaning, conditioning and making the guitar play as well as it can. So I've got a fairly neglected acoustic guitar. It definitely needs some new strings, a new clean. Pretty much everything on it needs setting up. Um, it is pretty grubby, so the whole thing needs a clean, not just the fretboard. Um, so yeah, in this video I'm going to show you how I fully maintain and clean up an acoustic guitar. So I'm on the floor right now purely because when it comes to filming me fixing guitars, it's pretty hard to get the right filming angles with the way I tend to be. But hey, I'm going to be down on the floor right now giving this acoustic guitar once over. So a couple of pointers. One, this is just a roll of bubble wrap. Could even be a cloth, a tea towel, with a soft cloth atop, across the top. This is really good for letting the neck of a guitar rest if it's got a reversing headstock, like one that leans backwards. Um, so this piece of guitar does. Being a thick enough body, it's not touching the floor. So actually I won't need this. It's really handy for electric guitars. Secondly, I'm going to be putting fairly light gauge for acoustic strings, only an 11 on this guitar, and that's because it's going to a beginner and a child. So they've got used to using nylon strings, but even the nylon strings hurt their fingers a bit. So the thinner gauge is a lot nicer for them to get used to their playing. It can cause a bit more fret buzz, but definitely going to be nicer for a beginner. I don't want any beginners to give up because their fingers are hurting. So the easier we can make their lives at the beginning, the better. So with the guitar solo, the guitar refurb, the stunt guitar being done up, the workshop making more, it's been a pretty good week for progress. Um, hasn't felt like that at some times, so I've definitely got in my own head this week, but feeling good again now. So thank you so much for watching, if you are interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing, give us that thumbs up, comment below any ideas, anything that you want. I actually do read all of those comments, so I really appreciate you putting the time in to leave one. Just a quick announcement that the Guitar Ninja Academy now has an improv course going live in the next couple of weeks. All of the footage is done, I've just got to do the last few bits to get it on the site. So there's even more progress coming there, that's towards the purple strap. So you can join for free if you're a brand new beginner, check out the white strap. You can also check out other bits and bobs, all for beginner and novice in bite-sized chunks, things to help motivate you to learn guitar. And if you enjoy it, then you can sign up for Premium, where you can access that new content that's going up next week, and any other bits and bobs that are on there. There's so much, already over 200 video lessons. So thank you so much for checking out this channel, watching this video, and I will catch you in a new video.